What's up guys, welcome to another episode. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys three things to look for when choosing new filters for landscape photography. All right, the first thing you want to do when you're looking for filters for landscape photography is what type of filters. Uh, generally, landscape photographers, we have a kit. So it has a filter holder and several different like square filters you can put in, a circular polarizer. Uh, so you have to determine right away what type of filters you want. I am actually testing out these case filters that Case sent out for me uh, for free. Now I'm interested in these magnetic filters and the reason why is because for me, I do not use grad filters. Those are the filters that are dark on the top and then get lighter as they get down lower on the filter. They're used a lot to bring down the exposure in the sky but not in the foreground. Uh, they're very popular, but for me, I never use them, literally never. What I prefer to do is to take different exposures, blend them in Photoshop or Lightroom. Uh, I have a video right here I'll let you guys see where I can just easily blend them in Lightroom with literally two clicks of a button. So I don't ever, ever use uh, grad filters. So those square filters, they just, they don't do anything for me. So if I don't need them, uh, I was looking for these circular filters. So K sent these out and they're really nice because they're magnetic. They just literally, they just pop on and off. It's fantastic. You don't have to have a mess with the filter. You just have an adapter ring. You can take this off, put the, uh, another filter on. Uh, the only thing you do is you get the largest diameter filter thread you have on any of your lenses and then you have adapter rings that can take them down lower. All right guys, so the next thing you wanna decide when choosing the type of filter is how many filters you need, what you're gonna use them for. Do you do a lot of those really long exposures? Do you wanna just have you know, some shorter exposures with like, rivers and waterfalls and things like that? And, and do you wanna be able to see underneath the water? So if I can make the case for one filter that you absolutely need, it would be a circular polarizer. Uh, what it does is it cuts that glare on top of water so you can see underneath when I spin this, uh, it makes the photo look completely different. It has a lot of glare around the outside of this beautiful green rock that I'm using as my foreground. And uh, what I wanna do is isolate that rock. And in order to do that, I need to spin my circular polarizer to make everything around it nice and dark. And I can see this really nice eel grass underneath here that these wild horses out here feed on. And that all adds to the photo, it completely changes it. And without a circular polarizer, I wouldn't be able to do, to do that. Using things like long exposures for clouds and water, you can actually do that without using an ND filter. You know, a six stop or a 10 stop to get those really long exposures to make that water look nice and silky smooth or to make those clouds look nice and long and look really, uh, really dramatic and really ethereal. You can take multiple exposures and combine them in Photoshop to get that same uh, exact look so you don't need those ND filters but a circular polarizer you cannot fit you cannot cut glare later on in Photoshop you have to do it out here in the field so my advice if it's one <laughs> only one filter you get make it a circular polarizer now the next type of filter after circular polarizer is a neutral density filter or an ND filter it's essentially just putting sunglasses over your lens you can get them in all different ranges from three stop to six stop to 10 stop, even 15 stops. So the more stops of light that this uh, the ND filter has, 
the longer your shutter speed is going to be and you get those really, really long exposure water or clouds or even those really ethereal looking seascapes with those 10 and 15 stop filters. So uh, I have a 6 stop and a 10 stop. Generally I use my 6 stop. I don't ever really use my 10 stop too much every once in a while. Now as far as graduated neutral density filters, you have a decision to make. Do you want to carry a couple extra filters? You know, you have medium grads, you have soft grads, you have hardline grads. And what those mean are is the uh, amount of graduation between the dark and the light. So some of them are a, a more soft or gradual. Uh, there's a hard line and then there's a medium, which is in between. And you need to decide on which ones you want to use, if you want to use any, or if you'd rather just take separate exposures and blend them later in post-processing. The reason why I don't like them is because rarely do I ever have a flat horizon. And so if you have like a tree or a cactus, part of that cactus is gonna be a little bit lower exposure than the bottom where there's no grad filter on because of you know the way the grad filter works. It's very uniform all the way down and generally nature doesn't do that. And a lot of times you can fix it in Lightroom or Photoshop, but I prefer not to do that. I prefer just to blend them later. Uh, to me, it's much more natural, but that's just my own preference. You need to decide on whether you want to carry more filters or do more work on the computer. Now, the second thing you want to look for when choosing a filter system is color cast. A lot of filters, especially ones that are on the cheaper side, have something called color cast. That means when you put the filter on, it maybe skews a little bit blue or magenta or warm. So you want to try and find something that's somewhat neutral. Now, how to determine the color cast, what you want to do is you want to put the camera's white balance into manual. So you want to be as neutral as possible. And what that means is you want it to match what your eyes are seeing. And this is just an eyeball test. So you want to get it somewhat close. Take one shot with a manual white balance take one shot without your filters on and then you take the second shot with your six stop and then take another one with a 10 stop and you can actually go side by side and check to see if they have any kind of color cast. Uh, that's not the end of the world if it does a little bit. Most filters, especially 10 stop filters, have a little bit of a color cast. I know Lee filters used to have, I'm not sure if they still do or not. Uh, when I first got into photography I bought Lee filters and the 10 stop had the worst blue color cast. It was absolutely terrible. Uh, right now, just so you guys know, I'm setting my white balance to 5,000 Kelvin and I'm gonna leave it there. So I'm gonna take a shot right now uh, with 5,000 Kelvin, no filters. I'm also gonna take a shot uh, with a six stop filter on, still at 5,000 Kelvin, and then I'm gonna take a shot at 10,000 Kelvin. And we're gonna see what that looks like. Just looking on the back of the camera here, it looks like the six stop is just a little bit on the magenta side. Not much, but it's a little bit on the magenta side. And the 10 stop, on the back of the camera anyway, it looks pretty neutral. It looks really similar to the shot I took without a filter, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Now the third and last thing you want to look for when choosing filters is the build quality, the coating, the scratch resistance, because landscape photographers, we put generally put them through uh, a lot of bad conditions, whether it's rain, whether we drop them. I've dropped more filters than I can count. I've broke filters. Uh, sometimes it's inevitable, there's nothing you can do, but you want to be able to look into uh, the, the, whether they're glass or resin or and what the rings are made out of, what the adapter rings are made out of, what the holders are made out of, and that's going to reflect on the price. So generally the better built filters, the more uh, scratch resistant, the types of coating they put on, and uh, like I said, just their overall build quality is going to determine their price. So you're going to pay a little bit more for the better filters in general, that's just the way it is. So I know a lot of people want to say, you know, do you have any budget filters? And there are some out there, but in my experience, the better filters are going to be a little bit more expensive. All right, guys, I'm going to take this shot now. I'm going to show you guys this photo in just a second, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.